Mr. Hamish, can you explain to us what happened to the colonial collection? It seems somewhat depleted. But, uh, oh, most likely maintenance work, tidying up. You're not sure, then? But you're the deputy director. Well, I am busy. I cannot be everywhere at once. Albert told us about the tragic death of Mr. Dunn, the late director of Kew Gardens. Tragic indeed. His heart attack was quite unexpected. As deputy director, how was your relationship with Montague Dunn? To be honest with you, Mr. Holmes, it could have been better. You see, every Tuesday he would carry out his inspection of the gardens, but it was solely to make an impression, great pretense that he cared at all. He would give out absurd orders, ignoring anyone else's opinion. He would then disappear for the rest of the week. He was what some might call a man of action. I'd say rather he was overzealous and chaotic. So after all, it was no wonder, perhaps, that he ended up like that, if you take into consideration his kind of lifestyle. You mentioned that Mr. Dunn led a particular lifestyle. Well, it's no secret that he enjoyed, uh, celebrating, shall we say? He was a member of the London Smart Set. He was famous for it. That and... And? He had an eye for the ladies, to put it mildly, Mr. Holmes. You tell me, Mr. Hamish, do you grow the more deadly variety of plant here? You mean insectivorous? Yes, but nothing larger than that. Thank you, Mr. Hamish. We shall continue our investigation. Can I help you, gentlemen? Uh, do you work here? Yes, but part-time only. But I'm also studying botany at the University of London. You're following in your father's footsteps, then that is commendable. Well, even if botany is not my strongest suit, there are people who say that I could be a good manager. Who is Miss Margaret White? Ah, she is the young lady who studies with me. She visits here sometimes to help out with the greenhouses. In fact, she should be here today. She wanted to work at the Seed House. That's the small greenhouse across from the large glass house. We noticed that a part of the colonial collection has been cleared. Ah. At the moment I'm just dealing with the storage room. I don't know much about the other rooms. I imagine that your relationship with your father may have been a strained one. Yes. I cannot say that he was a kind man, for he never listened to me at all. He forced me to work here. But now, after his death, I've been pondering it over. Perhaps he wasn't so wrong about me after all. I have to follow his path, and I have to manage Kew Gardens. And I can do it. I can be as good as any other who works here. Would you please tell us about Martin Hamish, the deputy director? Well, I have to tell you that Mr. Hamish is not and has never been the deputy director of Kew Gardens. My father would not have tolerated it. Indeed. Well, that is most interesting. He told us that he was. Yes, because he believes that the management should be passed down to him now that my father is dead. But in actual fact, Mr. Hamish only has the honour of being the garden's longest-serving employee. In fact, if we are to think logically at all, it should be me who takes over the management of Kew Gardens. Do you not have a good relationship with Mr. Hamish? I suppose so. But we have very little in common. Mr. Hamish loves his plants and Kew Gardens, and I cannot say that I share his passion. I see. And how was his relationship with your father? Oh, he hated my father. It was obvious. He would be furious whenever my father boasted of Kew Gardens in the newspapers or at conferences. He was convinced that my father was stealing all of the credit for himself. But my father treated Mr. Hamish in the same way as he treated anyone. Dismissively. With indifference. 
Thank you, young man. We shall see you again soon. A task list for Albert, compiled by Martin Hamish. Sweep out the palm house, scrub the toilets, clean the storage shed tools. Locked. What is your opinion of Albert as a student of botany? He's useless. I often tell him so, and I can only give him cleaning tasks. Botany is not his life's work, and his father well knew it. He was furious about it. He was? Oh, yes. He forced his son to work here, and he never missed an opportunity to criticize him publicly. Are you able to elaborate on that? Well... For example, with our last exhibition here, Mr. Dunn had Albert make a presentation speech. But then, while the lad was speaking, Mr. Dunn interrupted him, asking him difficult questions, making him look like a failure. It was with the intention of making a fool of him, Mr. Holmes. That must have been terribly humiliating. Yes, he was crushed, and he had to leave. Everybody was making fun of poor Albert. That is, except for Miss Margaret White, who is such a nice lady and who always takes pity on Albert. You mentioned a Miss White. Would you tell us more about her? She is a student who works here part-time. She is quite charming indeed. She possesses a great talent for botany. You should take a look at some of her experiments that she carried out in the laboratory. Ah, if only she were not so naive. Why naive? The way she used to flutter around Mr. Montague Dunn. And he... why, he couldn't help but be flattered by all her attention. How could... An intelligent woman such as Miss White not see through his game. I can only scratch my head and wonder. Mr. Hamish, can you tell us who holds the keys to the locked greenhouses? That would be Albert, Mr. Dunn's son. Yes, Albert keeps all the keys, and one can only imagine why. What do you mean? Well, he was never interested in Kew Gardens before. And now, all of a sudden, he is trying to act as if he owns the place. I think he wants to take over the management here. <laughs> He'd do better to leave that to me. He has no experience. No, none at all. Thank you, Mr. Hamish. We shall continue our investigation. Do you hold the keys to all of these locked doors? Yes, you can have them. But I cannot give you the keys to the cloakroom. The employee's effects are private. I am sure you understand. Thank you, young man. We shall see you again soon. There is a smell of burning. The symbol is not from Kew Gardens. A door handle? Why would anyone throw such a thing in the fire? The door handle to the colonial collection and that of the fireplace are made of the same material. The plants were set alight fairly recently. Some have not completely burned. A protective mask. 
Someone set it alight, but it did not burn. A broom handle was half burned. The remains of a picture frame. Look, Holmes, this charming lady must be Miss White. She's entering the seed house. Colonial Collection. Locked. Champagne. Montague Dunn had good taste. French wine. A remarkable vintage. Newspapers discussing Kew Gardens. A photograph of Montague Dunn and Reynold Hamish. I suggest that we don't tell Miss Margaret White about this document.
lock. There was a bottle here. It left behind a trace of the substance that pervaded the laboratory. Gold dust? Good heavens. What's it doing here? The gold is almost immune to chemical attacks, so it may be a valuable auxiliary for various experiments. But why would anyone perform such experiments in a botanical garden? Several drops of the substance were spilled. Someone carried this bottle around. Several drops of the substance. The bottle is no longer here, but it is possible to detect a faint scent. We need a good nose. A botany book. This student's book belongs to Albert. Chemicals, a sufficient quantity for some serious experiments. A phonograph used for voice recording, remarkable. Yes, this is quite a modern laboratory. And it seems clear from these multiple experiments that plants to respond to their environment and have a form of consciousness. Margaret White. February 1895. Report number 245. Study report. Martin Hamish's perception of plants. The notion of communication in the plant world has long been considered marginal, yet I remain convinced that some plants do indeed transmit chemical signals in the event of attack. A study report by Martin Hamish. This is a table for experiments. It resembles my own. Only this one is kept in good order, Holmes. It appears as though the protective equipment is missing from here. Gloves, waterproof aprons, everything one might need for self-protection. Do they grow dangerous plants here? Such masks are generally worn when dealing with toxic chemicals. Locked. Holmes, Albert Dunn didn't give us the key to this door. It does not matter. We will open it. Open. Miss White's locker. These jewels must be worth a small fortune. A vanity purse. It is of high quality.
Apparently, Miss White is a capable student. A draft of the letter that Miss White sent to her parents. Martin Hamish's locker. Father and I, Kew Gardens. A review on rare and exotic plants. Martin Hamish has written several pieces. Martin Hamish studied chemistry. Interesting. Albert's Locker. Specialist articles on shipyards and ship construction. Albert Dunn has a great passion for shipbuilding and the sea. A rejection letter from the British Royal Naval College. Young Albert, standing with a woman in front of London University. These young plants must be delicate if they are kept in the nursery. We can see the interior of the colonial collection room from this window. This poster is for an exhibition that Martin Hamish was directing, but it had nothing to do with Kew Gardens. This certificate belongs to Martin Hamish, he won a horticultural competition. A thesis, written by Martin Hamish. A glasses case. It is empty. This area serves as Martin Hamish's office. An award presented to Martin Hamish for Best Grower of the Year. A master's degree diploma. It belongs to Martin Hamish. I am curious if the marble that we found will fit this place. Here it is. The marble fragment that we found in the colonial collection room is what they have in common. It is a bust of Montague Dunn. The seeds of plant species are stored here. Locked. Open. Good day to you, miss. You have some very beautiful plants here. Why, thank you, sir. And good day to you, too. But... Oh, I, I do beg your pardon. My name is Dr. John Watson. 
This is my good friend, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. I am honoured to make your acquaintance, gentlemen. My name is Margaret White. Excuse me, but are you Sherlock Holmes, the great detective? Yes, I am he. What a pleasure to see you here at Kew Gardens. Are you working on a case? Yes, a theft of plants that took place here a few days ago after their most recent exhibition. Oh, oh yes, of course. I quite forgot about that. Oh, it's quite understandable that you might forget about the theft of the plants, miss, after the tragedy that took place here. Yes, the director was a truly good man. It is such a terrible misfortune. Would you happen to know why part of the colonial collection was cleared? No, I have never been there. Do you work here? Part-time only. I am a biology student at the London University. I attend the same classes as the son of Mr. Montague Dunn. That is how I found my chance to work here for part of my thesis, you see. It is a great honour. How well did you know Mr. Montague Dunn? He was a master, a great leader. I saw him almost as a spiritual father. He had an exceptional nature? Oh yes, indeed. He was always so active and so optimistic and very nice to me. Although he could behave harshly towards his son. Why so? He loved his son dearly and wanted the very best for him. It made him extremely demanding. Albert, who was naturally shy, suffered because of it. Most of the doors in Kew Gardens are locked. Do you have a key to this room? Oh, yes. Albert gave me a set of duplicate keys. He agreed I might carry out my studies without disturbing him. It is only temporary. Uh, thank you, miss. None of the three people who work at Kew Gardens know why half of the colonial collection was cleared. So, someone is lying, it is obvious. This is one of the outlets of the ventilation system. From here, we are unable to see the interior of the colonial collection room. Materials for college study. They belong to Albert. These leather gloves are new and of good quality. They do not appear to have been used. This place serves as Albert's office. A book about ships. Nothing at all to do with plants.
I perceive that you are passionate about the Royal Navy. Passionate? No, not really. I like ships, that is all. Are you quite sure? You do not seem to be so interested in plants. It's difficult, that's all. My future is here. It has never been about anything else. And yet I know that the Royal Naval College rejected your application. Ah, oh, you truly are as clever as they say. Yes, that's correct. And in fact, my father was strongly against the idea. He did his best to ruin my plans, although I almost did succeed. But my dreams were shattered, Mr. Holmes. Thank you, young man. We shall see you again soon. Mr. Hamish, was someone from your family connected with Kew Gardens? Family? No. I'm the only one with a passion for botany. I do not think so. This photograph of you and your father at Kew Gardens suggests the opposite. Ah, but you have no right to. Do tell us more about your father. He was, indeed, the greatest botanist of his time in the British Empire. He worked together with Montague Dunn until the end of his life. He brought me in at the age of twelve. Did he get on well with Mr. Dunn? No, I couldn't say that. They expanded Kew Gardens together, that was all. And it was all my father's work, for Dunn always lived the high life. So Mr. Dunn was not helping your father? Oh, yes, he provided the financial support. And as far as he was concerned, that fulfilled his role. But the worst of it was... He declared himself as the master of Kew Gardens. Fame meant nothing to my father. So it was easy for Mr. Dunn to take all the credit. There is a bust of Montague Dunn in the nursery. A bust? Oh, that old thing. Further proof of that outrageous ego of his. But why in that room, in particular? Oh, I, I don't know. It has always been there. It is strange, because I recovered a fragment of the bust inside the colonial collection room. Really? Oh, well, so I am mistaken. It ought to have been removed during the clean-up. This room is so small. Hmm. Do you know who moved it? I have no idea. Surely Mr. Dunn requested it. Do you have any more questions like this? Because fragments of rock are not my responsibility. Evidently. Thank you, Mr. Hamish. We shall continue our investigation. <laughs>